We're talking about what it means to be in Christ. If you will read the book of Ephesians through, you'll find Paul using that little phrase, in Christ, over and over and over again. Most Bible scholars accept the fact that the theme of the book of Ephesians is what it means to be in Christ. Note this. Being in Christ causes the Father to see Jesus and not us. The holiness of Jesus He sees in us when we have accepted Him as our Lord and Savior. The righteousness of Jesus He sees in us when we have accepted Jesus' righteousness by faith. And so the Bible teaches us that we are hid in Christ. Amen? Now that doesn't mean that we get scot-free and don't do anything about protecting holiness. We still have to allow the character of Christ and the nature of Christ to be developed in us. And we still have to let that be manifest to a lost and dying world. So that brings us to the passage today in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. We entitle this Godly Living, or you can flip it and say Living Godly. Amen? It means both. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There's one body, one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. As we look at this morning, we learned last several Sundays that every one of us is equal in Christ. There are no big eyes, there are no little you in Christ. Christ, there's no rich, there's no poor. There's no educated, there's no uneducated. The blood of Jesus and Him coming and dwelling us out of us makes everybody in the house of God the same. And I love that. Amen? Amen. Being short all my life, I have not always been equal. <laughs> but in heaven, because we're all going to have a glorified body, I'll be as tall as the rest of you. So. <laughs> I'll make it. Amen. Christ has made us all one. We're supposed to be in unity. Walking together in unity in the Spirit of God. We were blessed by Paul's prayer in the church. He prayed that we might be strengthened with power in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith. That we may be rooted and grounded in love and be able to comprehend or understand, if you will. And finally, that we might be filled with the fullness of God. What a wonderful prayer. What you need to do, what I need to do, is we need to claim that. When we pray, we need to say, Lord, I'm being strengthened in the inner man with power and might. Amen? Lord, I'm being filled with the fullness of God. Lord, I'm being rooted and grounded in love and you are enabling me, enabling me to comprehend what that love is all about. Amen? We have not yet understood what the love of God truly is. And I say that for this. How many of you, in order to save somebody would sacrifice your only son. Mm -hmm. Most of us would, if we were human and, and honest, we would say, I wouldn't think about that at all. You know? But God did. God did. He gave us His only begotten Son. Mm -hmm. That is godly love. Mm -hmm. That is sacrificial love that says, I prefer you before me. Amen. And if we 
could learn a little bit of that love in our relationships between husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, in the family, in the workplace, in the church, if we can understand that, then we would be willing to sacrifice for one another and for the other's good. Even if it was to our harm, we would still do it. Amen? Because let's face it, you can't outgive God. Amen. When our God says, if you give a glass of water in my name, it will be remembered. Amen? Just a glass of water. Amen? Can you imagine a God saying to you and I, love your enemies? Do good to those that despitefully use you? That's not human. <laughs> That's divine. Amen? That's the nature of Christ. That tells me that I'm going to pray for my enemies. And I'm going to love my enemies. And rather than curse those who despitefully use me, I'm going to do good to them. Amen. Amen? When we begin to do that, when we begin to see that manifest in our life, we can truly say, His nature is being born in me. His nature is growing in me. I am becoming more like Jesus. So people can see Jesus in me. You see, the thing that prevents people from seeing Jesus in us is us. Amen. Honestly. Sometimes the way we talk, sometimes the way we behave, sometimes the way we react, we're still walking in this flesh and we've got to admit that. Amen? Amen? But we also got to admit that God's <laughs> grace is sufficient and God's Spirit is able to help us to overcome this flesh. Amen? Amen. That we don't have to be repeat offenders. Amen. We don't have to keep doing the same old sin the same old way. We don't have to react the same old way. Amen. Amen. We can change. And how can we change? Through the Holy Word of God. Believing what this Word says that we can be and strive to be that. By allowing that power of God that's inside of you, the sweet Holy Spirit that has indwelt each of you, let Him transform you from the inside out. Amen? And it starts by transforming the way we think. Amen? We've got to quit thinking the way we used to think. Mm -hmm. The reason we keep doing what we do is because we keep thinking the same way. Mm -hmm. But when we start thinking the way Jesus would look at something and think about it, guess what? We will be changed. Amen? And guess what else? When we start thinking like Jesus... We're going to feel that peace of God just flow from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. We're going to feel God's holy presence when we begin to think like Jesus does. Paul concluded his prayer with a benediction that extols Christ the Lord in the church. And isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Lifting up Jesus. Exalting the Lord of glory. Receive this truth this morning. Believers in Jesus are new creations. And they are to manifest the person of Christ to the world. That is our purpose. Amen? Oh, we have other purposes, yes. But in whatever else we are doing, we are still supposed to be manifesting Jesus Christ. Amen? Whether we're a doctor, a lawyer, a bus driver, a teacher, it doesn't matter those other purposes we have. In all of it, we are to let people know that Jesus is in us by the way we behave, by the way we talk, by the way we treat them. Amen? We need to learn to treat people the way we want God to treat us. Somebody just said, we need to treat God the way we want to be treated. No, we need to go beyond that. We need to treat people the way we want God to treat us. Mm -hmm. And that will be even better. Mm -hmm. The first thing you understand is you need to walk worthy of we need to walk worthy of our calling. The old homespun way is, make Jesus proud <laughs> by the way you walk. Amen? Did you know you can make God proud? Do you know that psalmist loved God so much? He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, 
And all that's within me, bless His holy name. Now too often we come to church, we want the blessing. Amen? But we can bless God. How wonderful is that? That we who are created in His image can bless the Almighty God. Amen. Through our praise, through our thanksgiving, through the way we talk, through the way we act, through the way we reach out to others who are hurting and try to heal the hurt. Amen? I used to say, and I still believe it, that every Christian needs to find a need and fill it. And find a hurt and heal it. Now, if you're helping supply needs for people, if it's just a listening ear, if you're trying to heal a hurt by simply giving a fit word in its season so that they no longer feel so bad, but they're encouraged. Amen? You are letting them see Jesus in you. Amen. And isn't it interesting you know, when you walk away, you suddenly hear somebody say, now that's a Christian. Amen. That's a godly man or woman. Amen. And when it comes time to bury you, there ain't no preacher that needs to preach. You have preached your own funeral. By the way, you live. Amen. I'm imagining and I'm concerned that when some people die, people try to find things good to say about them. That's sad. Because nobody ever wants to say anything bad about the dead. But isn't it wonderful when you live in such a way before Almighty God that all that they can say about you is something good? Amen. Something building up. Amen. Oh, if you could have just had sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so in your life, how much better would you have felt? How much more encouraged would you have been? Because they always had an encouraging word. Amen? So, in verse 2 and ends in verse 32 with exhortation, we are to love and forgive one another. To be in Christ means we need to learn to love and and forgive one another. Paul taught us that God has made both Jew and Gentile as one in the church. And He's called the church, us, to, support, to display that wisdom. If anybody on earth can find unity, they need to find it in the church. Amen? They're not going to find it in the government. They're not going to find it in the military. Amen? But if they can find unity, they better find it in the church. Amen? Because as we are one in Christ and we live for Christ, then we manifest the wisdom of God. We're to do this through godly living and also a diversity of gifts, which we will talk about next time, which contribute to the common welfare. We're to walk worthy of our calling in humility. We are to humble ourselves before our God. Amen? Don't walk around arrogant. I've often wondered how people who walk around like a peacock don't drown when it rains. <laughs> Amen? Have the nose up in the air and catch all the rain. They don't need no more. We're supposed to be humble before God. Amen? Think as much of ourselves as God thinks of us. And no more. We are to be patient or long-suffering with one another. If you have a brother or sister in the Lord and they're not where you are spiritually, they're not seemingly as mature as you are, you've got to be patient with them. You've got to suffer long with them. Because in doing so, you'll keep them in the church. And you'll keep them in a mind to grow. Amen? I was saddened in some churches where the young people didn't grow up as fast as the older folks thought they ought to. And they got stayed so much on those youngins' backs, the youngins quit coming. How wrong is that? Amen? We cannot expect someone, no matter how old they are, if they just got saved, to be as mature as we are. Amen? 
And we expect, can't expect a youngin who doesn't have the wisdom nor think the way we do always act the way we do. Amen? Amen. And we are to forbear or accept one another in love. Amen? We're supposed to put our arms out and accept each other. Amen? Like you are. And if I accept you like you are, that releases me to pray for God to make you what He wants you to be. Amen? That guides my prayer life. That I'm not, I'm not praying in a manner the way I think you need to be changed. I'm praying in a manner out of love and out of humility. And I'm saying, Lord, you know what my brother or my sister needs. I give you. They're in your hands. And then just let me love them and live before them. Amen. That they might want to model their life somewhat after mine. Amen. As I model my life after Jesus Christ. Secondly, we're to work. Listen now. We're to work at being at peace with one another. And sometimes, folks, that is a work. Amen? Sometimes we get cross. That happens. We're human. Humans get cross sometimes. Husbands and wives get cross one time. But you have to work at that peace with one another. Amen? Amen. And if you want to work at peace, don't throw grenades. <laughs> Amen? I don't know if anybody's wanting peace by throwing grenades or shooting artillery or trying to be one up. Come on now. Amen? amen. It's either amen or oh me. <laughs> Work at being at peace. If that means I have to give up some of my rights and freedom so I can be at peace with somebody else, I need to do that. James calls that the royal law of love. Love says, if I offend my brother by eating meat offered to idols, I'll no longer eat meat as long as the world stands. Mm -hmm. Knowing in my mind that that meat offered to idols is nothing once you pray and sanctify it. Amen? Mm -hmm. If my behavior offends my brother, then I will change my behavior around that brother. Mm -hmm. Amen? And who knows, maybe we need to change it anyway. Mm -hmm. And live at peace. Amen? Don't you know how it feels to live at peace? When there's no conflict. Amen? Yes. When there's comfort and there's joy. Amen? Everybody's walking in unity. Amen? How wonderful, it, how wonderful a workplace would be if everybody in the workplace would work in peace. Amen? It's sad today how many bullies are in the workplace. It really is sad. People have positions, they're bosses and such. Because they're the boss, they are not humble. They overdo things. And they mistreat people sometimes. Not everybody. There are some really good bosses out there. But we still have to, if we want to keep our job have to work at being at peace with whoever that is. Amen? Amen? Now, this peace I'm talking about was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. He purchased your peace as much as He purchased your salvation with His death. It is our responsibility to keep the unity and peace in the church undisturbed. We're supposed to do that. We're not supposed to have any disruptions in the church. Amen? We need to pray about it. If we get upsought, I used to have a dear old friend from Florida. He used the word upsought. Instead of being upset, he was always upsought. Amen? Instead of being upsought, we need to pray till God pushes our tail feathers down. <laughs> It makes us be at peace. 
Amen? I wouldn't want to leave the house of God if I wasn't walking in peace with God. Amen? I come to the house of God because I expect to be in a place of peace. I expect to be in a place I can rest. Now some folks do that and you hear them. <coughs> I don't bother those because I know they're at peace with God. <laughs> but be at peace. Amen. It's a better way to live. Amen. Amen. For it isn't the only one that had a better idea. Amen. God had the best idea. Live at peace with one another. Unity and peace do not always happen once and for always, but must be worked on by every individual in the church. Amen. I wish that every time we came together, there would be peace. But we live in a world where people die. And when they're grieving, their spirit's not really at peace. And to be at peace with them, we need to enter in to their suffering their grief and encourage them and comfort them and let them know that they are not alone. They lost a loved one, yes, and they can't bring the loved one back, but we all have the hope we can go to them. Amen. So yes, you're going to have some folks that's going to come in grief. You're going to have some folks sometimes that may have lost their job. If they've lost their job, they're not at peace. But they need to be in a bunch of people who says, I'll pray for you and I'll trust God to help you find a job and provide you a job and provide your needs until that job comes. Amen? In other words, you take your peace and you impart it to them for the sake of Jesus Christ that they might be at peace. Do you see how wonderful our purpose in God is? How much we can do that we can do more than just come to God's house and sit in a chair and sing some songs and then say we did it all. But every day we live, we can reach out to somebody. We can help somebody. We can call them on the phone. A lot of us love them phones. We can send a card. Amen. We can go visit them. Amen. And guess what? When you do that and you talk to them, you know your joy becomes full. Amen? God does something inside of you when you start ministering one to another. Finally this morning, we need to welcome the unity and the equality of the body. We don't need to fight against it. Christ has made everybody one in Christ. doesn't matter what color they are doesn't matter what the other religion was. doesn't matter what political party they're in. Amen? Somebody asked one of those politicians this week about his party. He says, I'll say this. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. You see, I love America. But I'm going to heaven. Amen? I've got part of the kingdom of God. Amen. I've got a king who's not kicked out every four years or eight years or whatever. Amen. I've got a king who's been on that throne forever. And will forever will he be there. Amen. Amen. I've got a kingdom that won't fall. His kingdom is forever. And I'm part of that kingdom. Amen. There is one spirit which means we are all to walk together like-minded. Amen? We're all to walk together the same way. Thinking the same thing about Christ. And doing the same thing for Christ. Amen? Be like-minded. There is one hope. Our hope is tied to the glorious future of Christ in which all believers share. What's that hope? Of being with Jesus. It's a hope that will lead you through all life's crises. Amen? Whether it be financial, whether it be emotional, whether it be relationship, if you have hope, you'll always rise above the problem. Amen? Somebody says, I'm looking for a solution to my problem. Here's your solution. Hope. Hope in God. Amen? Hope in God. 
I've been there too often close to death. But it's always hope that's brought me back. Amen. Amen. And I've seen precious people that they gave up to die. And go and pray with them and talk with them. And one thing I would always tell them, don't give up your hope. Live. Live. Until God says it's your time. And He convinces you it's time to give Him your spirit. Hope. And I've seen a lot of folks that the doctors wrote off get up out of that hospital bed and go home. Amen. Amen? Amen. Then on the other hand, I've seen people who lost their hope and they could have lived because they lost their hope in living. They died. So if I can infuse or impart anything to you, Hope always for the good. Hope always to win. Amen? Amen? Hope always that your blessed hope is watching out for you and watching over you. And your blessed hope one day is coming back to take you home to be with Him. Amen? Amen? That'll, that'll sure cheer up your day. <laughs> Amen? Amen? That'll take away the mully groats. There is one whom we call Lord or Almighty God or Adonai. And that's the Almighty. Amen? Amen? We don't call any man or any woman, any country, Lord. There's one God. Amen? He eternally existed in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? There is one faith which consists of the teachings of Christ, his life, His death, His resurrection, and a life of grace. That's our faith. There is neither a Jewish faith nor a Gentile faith. There is only one faith, the Christian faith. Right. The faith that points people to Jesus. There is one baptism in which we are all baptized into one body by the Spirit. And then water baptism is the outward sign of the inward work of Jesus Christ. Amen? When we are baptized in water, we go down into His death, and when we come up out of the water, we are raised into that life that says, I am a Christian. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen? That's why when the old devil wants to come back and talk to me about old things, I say, I don't know what you're talking about. Those are gone. Now you want to talk to me about new things, we'll talk. Amen? Let's talk about eternal life. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about forgiveness of sins. Amen? There's only one Father. God is the Father in four relationships. He's the Father of all men by virtue of Him being the Creator. God is Father of everybody. He's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Father over Israel. And He's the Father of all believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's your Father. He's my Father. When our mom and dads go on ahead of us, we'll always have a Father. My mom's dead, my dad's dead, but my Father ain't dead. Right. Amen. My, my father is very much alive. And he very much cares for me. And he very much cares for you. We are to take seriously our new position in Christ and in the church. We're to bring honor and glory to God by being unified and walking in peace with one another. We are to understand our faith and we are to live by it. Amen. How can I understand my faith? Keep my nose in the book. Amen. 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 You know, nowhere in this book is our title that says life, but you will find life in it. Amen. 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 Nowhere in here does it say time, but you'll find all about time in it. Amen. And nowhere on here does it say newspaper, 
But in it, you'll find all the good news you can stand. <laughs> Amen. 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 If I'm going to read the newspaper, let me let me open the book. <laughs> if I'm going to read the magazine time, let me open the book. Amen. If I'm going to read about life, let me open the book. Amen. 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 You are what you read, what you watch, and we're finding out what you eat. That's right. Amen? Amen. So let's us be good church folk, good Christians. Love Jesus with all our heart. Mm -hmm. And love every man, whether they're born again or not. Mm -hmm. Love them the way that God loves them. And love them into the family of God. Because I don't want anybody to go to hell. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to die in their sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. I don't care how mean they are. Mm -hmm. I don't care how scrupulous they are. Amen. I know a God that can wash them up. And they won't be like that pig that wallowed in the mud and they washed him up and put a pretty little pink bow on him. And then when that pig go, it went back into the mud. The difference is our nature's been changed. A pig is still a pig because he has the nature of a pig. But a Christian is a Christian because we have the nature of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we don't want to go back in the mud. <laughs> Amen. We won't want to go back into sin. Amen. We got ourselves on this way through Jesus Christ by faith and we want to just put one foot before the other. One foot before the other. Our hand in the hand of Almighty God and God walking with us. Amen. Amen. I'm reminded of those football players that picked me up when I was in the ninth grade and carried me 